All right, so we're gonna do a little review first. Okay. <laughs> Guys, listen up. Okay. So a little review first. You have to have some intuitive sense of what of the size of angles to really understand what radians are. Okay. So uh, what quadrant is sixty degrees in? Okay, what quadrant would 120 be in? Very good. What quadrant would 225 degrees be in? And what quadrant would a 330 be in? Very good. So the first thing I have to understand is in, in, in standard measure of angles, okay, we always measure from the positive x-axis. That's where the angle starts from, okay? So I want to draw just a basic angle, and I want you guys to have some sense of how to how to draw coterminal angles also with this. Okay. So if I were to draw, let's draw a 45. Okay, 45 is in the first quadrant. Okay, and it's in the po positive x-axis is where you start the measure from. Okay, and so how you would draw that is you would draw a curve from the positive x-axis up to this side of the angle. It's called the terminal side. So that would be a 45 degree angle. Okay. Now it turns out, I mean, how many guys are into like snowboarding or, you know, you do all these like revolutions? You know, like I did a 360 blah, 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 you know, on the, you know, on the, or you know, how, you know how they do it like on the Olympic Games? They're doing like nine, they're doing a 900 double backflip and all these rotations, right? Well, it's the same idea. That's where this comes from, right? They look at the number of rotations in the air, okay? So let's say, let's say I want a, a complete revolution around that and go back to that 45, right? Turns out that would look like this. You go past the angle, and you go all the way back to the same terminal side. So it actually be the exact same orientation, right, with respect to the positive x-axis. I want you guys to tell me, if I went all the way around and back to this terminal side, what measure would that be? So I add 360 plus 45, right? I went all the way around, back to it. So it'd be, yep, so 360 plus 45, that would also be a 405 degree angle, okay? So what I want you guys to understand is you can draw what's called coterminal angles. That would be considered a positive coterminal angle, which just means it's the same angle, just a full revolution around, okay? So what if I went 360 degrees again? You'd add 360 again to that, right? And so forth. So you could also do the same angle, which is kind of interesting, right? You could also do a negative coterminal angle. So I want to make sure you guys understand what that means too. Okay? So it turns out that if I start at the positive x-axis, that's where you always start, by the way, okay? And I go, see... Standard angles, I want you to, let's jot this down. The standard ro uh, direction of rotation is counterclockwise. So we're going to do a positive coterminal angle. A positive coterminal angle is counterclockwise. That's your direction. Counterclockwise. Okay. So if I want a negative coterminal angle, a negative coterminal angle angle you actually go the other direction so which direction would i go clockwise around the positive x-axis okay so now i'm going to go clockwise that's important to understand okay so then when they say it's a negative angle all i do is i start from the positive x-axis and i go all the way around to where that angle stops or is formed so this would be my coterminal side on this in this case, okay? Which which is interesting because now we know the measure of that angle is an, in a negative degree angle, okay? I want you guys to think about what this angle would be as a negative angle, okay? 
and, and let's let's try to use some common sense. How many degrees in a full circle? So if I took 45 and I subtracted 360, what would that angle be? Negative 315 degrees. Okay. So you could also write this angle. It, the blue, I could write it. It's a negative 315 also. Okay. So those three angles are all the same. Just kind of interesting, right? They're all they're all 45 degree angles, just expressed a different way. This guy is a full revolution in one direction, right? And this angle would be a negative angle of that from the positive x-axis. So they're all the same. So the moral of the story is this, guys. Okay? When you find a positive coterminal angle, what do you add to it? 360. And when you want a negative coterminal angle, you subtract. You subtract. Yeah. So, see, notice the natural angle is negative 315, so it's already negative, right? But if I wanted another one, I can go a full revolution around and just subtract another 360 from that, right? And you'd be able to get that. So we're going to practice that first. I think that's an important skill. All right, so here we go. Let's start with a basic angle, 145. Okay, let's just draw a standard 145. Okay. So here we go. Um, what quadrant is 145 in? The second. So here's the positive x-axis, right? So we're going to draw a standard angle from the origin, and we're going to draw a 145. That would be in the second quadrant, okay? So that would look like this. Let's draw from the positive x-axis counterclockwise to this side. And we're just going to put down 145. So there's your first angle right there. That's the most basic one, okay? Now what I want you guys to be thinking about is how do I get another positive coterminal angle? So all I do is I go around and back to that same side. So what do I add to it? 360. All right, so let's draw this, right? So if I were to go from here to here and then just continue it and loop it back all the way around to the same side in a different color, we just add 360 to 145. Okay, so go ahead, take, what's 360 plus 145, guys? Okay, so we get, we get 505, right? You all oh, agree? Okay, so we would say 505 is one other positive coterminal angle, and that's fine. They want one, they just want one other positive coterminal angle. So that's a complete revolution around that same axis, right? Now, how would I find one negative coterminal angle? Well, if I start at the positive x-axis, I'm going to do this in a different color so you guys can see this, right? And I'm going to go to this side of the same angle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, notice I start right here, I'm going to go to the same side of the same angle, okay? An easy way to figure out what that measure is, is to take 360 and subtract off 145. Or take 145 minus 360, it's an easy way to get it, okay? So, what would 145 minus 360 be? Or you can think of it as 180 from here to here, right? And then you go a little bit more above that above the above that axis. Negative two fifteen. Very good. So you already know that negative two fifteen would be a neg a negative coterminal angle. Okay. And then you could add another three sixty to get another negative coterminal angle. Okay. So all it is is pilots. I mean, this is using like navigation, right? When you're when you're classifying angles, it's always from the positive x axis. So we know which direction we're talking about, right? So keep that in mind, guys. So when we draw these out, we start with just a basic, right? Let's go from there. So how about this? On your own, I want you to draw a 65. Estimate. I want you to give me a one positive 
in one negative coterminal angle. See if you can figure it out. Okay. You try to draw the rotation. Okay, that would be. Okay. So what quadrant is 65 in, guys? One. That's in one. Very good. Okay. And then try to draw that rotation, right, in both directions. One one is a positive coterminal and one is a negative. Okay. What are we looking for? Okay. All right, so, yeah, let's see where we got it here then. So 65 is right here. So let me draw this in blue. <laughs> so there's our 65-degree angle from the positive x-axis. So how many had that first? All right, good. Um, so, Lawrence, how would I get a, a, a positive coterminant angle? What do I do? You go the only one. You go all the way around back to the same angle, right? Yep. So in other words, what do I add to that? Uh, yeah, you add 360. Add 360, a full revolution. Very good. So, all right, what's 360 plus 65? 425. Very good. So 425 would be one positive coterminal angle. Okay? All right, now if I want a negative coterminal angle. I start from the positive x-axis and I just go to the same side of it in the other direction. That go clockwise, right? So all you do is you take, you can, another way to think of it is 360 minus, or 65 minus 360 will get you that negative angle. So you're, I mean, you can, because you're starting, you're just kind of going all the way back around to it, right? So what do you need the graph for? If you just it, it's, well, it's important to understand how you're getting the same angle, though. Okay, yes, you are adding 360 and subtracting it, right? But if I subtract 360 from that, what do I get? Negative 295. Thank you. Okay. So how many how many got those three angles? Raise your hand if you got those three. Okay. Do we all understand how we draw those three angles? Okay, good. All right, let me show you one other one that's kind of interesting here. Let's try this one, letter C. We have a negative 120 degree angle. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. Here's the positive x-axis. Okay. So that means you start from there. Where would that be located? Oh, careful. So, but, but notice it's a negative. So that means which direction do I go? Yeah, I go, I go clockwise, right? So it wouldn't end up in the fourth quadrant. It'd actually be which one, guys? You're going clockwise, not, not counterclockwise. So which way would it go? It would be in this one right here. So in other words, it'd be in the third, so you rotate it this way. So a negative 120 means it really starts on the positive x-axis and it goes 120 degrees this way. Okay? So be very careful, guys, when you see the original angle, how that would look like, right? So that's what it would look like. Now, if I want a positive coterminal angle, all I do is add what to that? 360. So I'll go ahead and do that. Add negative 120 plus 360. What would that be? 240. 240. So what does that mean? From the positive x-axis, if you go this way, that means you go all the way around to this side of the same angle. So you go counterclockwise, right? So a 240 would be the same measure as a negative 120. All right? Those two are the same exact thing just from a different vantage point, okay? Now, if I want to find another negative coterminal angle, 
all I do is subtract another 360 from that. So what's negative 120 minus 360? Negative 480. So watch this, guys. It looks like this. You take that blue curve and you go all the way back around to the same side. So that would be a negative 480. Okay? All right. So does everybody see how to do that first? Is that, is that pretty easy to do? We know how to find coterminal angles. One positive and one negative. Okay. All right. So now we're going to hit something new with this then. Here we go. So the first time you guys have heard of radians is because radian is another way to measure angles. Okay. In higher level math, a lot of times we're going to talk about angles and radians. So I want to talk about what that means first. Okay, so I want you guys to draw a circle. All right, and then we're going to make the center of that circle. Okay, it turns out that if you were to take one radian measure, okay, you guys pay attention, please. Okay, one radian is when the radius of the circle has the same arc as the arc length is the same as the radius of the circle. That's what we define one rad as. Okay. So I, want, I really want you guys to understand where the radians come from. When that arc length is the same as the radius of the circle, the angle formed is one radian. Okay. And it turns out that it's about 57 degrees is one radian. Equivalent. Okay, and here's why that's the case. Okay, I want you guys to understand that in a full circle, how many degrees are in a full circle? 360, right? So it turns out that there's, there's two pi radians in 360 degrees. Okay, so in other words, half of a circle is pi radians. Okay, does that make sense? Pi radians is the same as 180 degrees in a circle. Okay, so it turns out that if I, what's pi as a decimal, guys? 3.14. So let's kind of draw this out, right? Let's draw this out. How many radians you get in one circle, right? So in, in the half of a circle, you're going to get about three little sectors, three rads. So you got about 3.14, and then you got another little three sectors. So actually, in a full complete circle, what does 2 pi really mean? 6 point what? 6.28 radians. That's the same as 6.28 rads, radians, in 360 degrees. So when, they, when I say 2 pi radians, that's the same as 6.28 radians. Okay? Because we already know what pi is. Okay? So what I want you guys to understand is that that relationship is important to understand. Pi radians is 180 degrees. Okay? And then, so from that information, I think we said 1 radian, this is about 57 degrees, equivalent to about 57 degrees. Okay, so we want to have that idea when, we, when we're doing these. Okay, so let's draw this out where we're talking about radian measure. Okay, so let's start with a basic angle. All right, so we, let's say we had a 45 degree angle. Okay, the first thing I want you guys to understand is in a circle, no longer are we talking about degrees, we're talking about radians. Okay. Do you see how pi is over here? How many degrees is that? What's that equivalent to degrees? 180, right? You see how a 90 degree angle would be pi cut in half? Right? Why would that be pi cut in half? Because it's 180 divided by what? 2, right? So that's why a 90 is pi over 2 in radians. Okay? You see why a, this would be a 270 all the way down here. This would be a 270 degree. 
you see why they're all just adding half pies all around the circle? Mm -hmm. There's two pies in a full circle, right? So you got a half pie, a full pie, one and a half pie, and three halves pie, right? So you're just adding 90 degrees all the way around the full circle. So when you can express them in terms of their radian measure, okay? So the first thing I want you guys to understand is what would a 45 be in radians? Pi over 4. So good. That would be pi cut four ways. Those are 45. That would be pi over 4. Okay. Now, a little trick I want to show you guys here is when you see pi in radians, think of that as 100 degrees, 180 degrees, excuse me. So what's 180 divided by 4? 45. That's how you know that's a 45. Okay. That's an easy way to, to look at those. Okay, so let me show you guys how to do this same scale with radians. Okay. Yep. What's up? Okay. Yeah. Why do we distinguish between degrees and radians? Radians is used in a lot of different applications, other than what you typically see in a degree. So you're going to see it used in quite often, quite a, uh, down the road. Okay. Why would we use? Radians are not, is it like a specific There's, reason why? Yeah, not necessarily, but in higher higher level math, you're going to see radians used a lot more than degrees, unfortunately. That's that's yeah. like the exact it's like the gateway, the gateway to advanced learning. you got to look at angles in, from different ways sometimes, okay? So, it's just another way to look at angle measure. Same concept, just another way to do it, okay? So... Let's, let's look at a few examples of this, right? All right, here we go. 2 pi over 3. Okay. If we want to figure out what that is as a standard angle, plug 180 in for pi. So it's 2 times 180 divided by 3. It's an easy way to do it. Okay. So that's 360 divided by 3, which is what? 120. So when you guys do this, that's the first thing you got to pick up on is I already know that's a 120 degree angle, right? So if we did the same skill, right? We just take 120, that's in the second quadrant. That's right there, okay? Notice the angle of rotation would be from here to here. There's your 120, okay? So if we did another positive coterminal angle, we would just go all the way around, and go back to that same side. So all we do is add what to 2 pi over 3? 3. 360 or 2 pi. 2 pi is the same as 360, right? So the only difference is you take 2 pi over 3 and you add 2 pi to it to get its radian measure. Okay? And so... Let, we all know that, you know, to add these up, you got to get a common denominator and express in terms of pi, right? So put a 1 under there, and you add those two fractions. Okay? So on the right fraction, what does it need? A 3, right? So it's really 2 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3, right? So what does the top add up to? 8 pi over what? Three. There's your positive coterminal angle. Okay? Now it turns out that 8 pi over 3 is, is whatever 120 plus 360 is. So what would that be? 480. That's the same as a 480 degree in radians. Okay? So when you guys are doing these, you do the exact same thing. You just add 2 pi to it instead of 360. Alright? So if I want a negative coterminal angle, I just take that measure... And I do what to it? Subtract what? Subtract 2 pi. Right? So instead of subtracting 360, I subtract 2 pi. Because 2 pi is 360 degrees in radians. Okay? Yes, it will. You want it in radian measure, not degrees. 2 pi is 360. Okay? 2 pi is 360 degrees. Okay? So all I do is get a common denominator and subtract those out. Right? So 
So here we go. Same thing, right? Multiply by 3, top and bottom. 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 is going to be what? Negative 4 pi over 3. Negative 4 pi over 3 is the radian measure of, the, of a negative coterminal angle. Okay? So all you would do if you were trying to draw this, it would look like this. You start at the positive x-axis, and you go clockwise to the same side of the angle. Okay? Or, to, excuse me, to the other side of its terminal angle. Right? And so, what would uh, 120 minus 360 be? So that would be a negative 240 degree angle. That expression is the same as a negative 240. Okay. Why, yep. Uh, why just that, like, from the yeah, we're leaving it in terms of radians. Why? Because that's what they want. Draw the angles in radian measure, not degree measure. Okay. So, yep. So a lot of times it's easier to visualize it in degrees, uh, and then just kind of go from there. And you'll get the two uh, radian equivalents. Okay. So let, let's try one, let's see where you guys are at here, okay? So let's say I had 6 pi over 5, okay? 6 pi over 5. How do you figure out the degree equivalent? 6 times 180 divided by what? 5. So what is that? 260, all right. So we, already, we all know that's a 260. So let's draw our standard angle, right? Or 216, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. 216. All right, so what we would do is 216 would be in which quadrant? 180 from here to here and then a little bit more, right? So it would be in the third quadrant, right? So it would be like this. So having the intu intuition to understand that the angles, it looks like that is Im important to start, right? So there's your standard measure. Now to make this easy, all you do is add what to it? You add 2 pi to it in radians, right? Same as 360, right? So let's take 6, five, six pi over 5 and add 2 pi. And then we're going to take 6 pi over 5 and subtract 2 pi to get another negative coterminal angle. So we want one of each, right? Okay, on your own, go ahead and figure out what those two are. And then we'll, we'll actually draw it out. To see what it looks like. Okay? So just get a common denominator and add those expressions. Sometimes if it's not negative, you have to subtract the pi again. Yeah, just subtract four pi. You know? If it doesn't turn out negative, you got to subtract another 360 from it. So you got to be careful there. Okay. So, all right, here we go. So here's our basic setup, right? This one you multiply by 5 top and bottom. So you get 6 pi over 5 plus 10 pi over 5, which is what? 16 pi over 5. There's one of your angles. Okay. This one you do the same thing. Multiply by 5 top and bottom. You're going to get the same expression as negative 4 pi over 5. Okay. Now, Kyle brought up a good point. What if you, like, subtract and it's not negative? Usually it is, but if you get a case where you subtract and you don't get a negative coterminal angle, you just got to subtract another 2 pi from it to get a negative coterminal angle, okay? So if you were to draw this out, it would look like this. The positive coterminal angle would go all the way around, back to the same side, so that orange arc would be this angle in radians, right? And then if you went clockwise, 
For the other angle, let me do a different color here, in green maybe. You go clockwise to this side of the same angle, that would be your negative 4 pi over 5. Drawn out. Okay? So at the end of the day, guys, do we understand that pi radians is what it, what degree measure? What degree is pi radians? 180. That's important to understand. So what would two pi radians be? 360. So when you guys understand the concept of a radian, just remember there's two pi radians in one complete circle. Okay, and you're golden. Okay. All right, I want to show you one other skill here we're going to want to be able to do here before we wrap up here, okay? There's a nice little formula to go from degree to radians or radian to degree, okay? And it's actually pretty easy to get, okay? So here's how I remember this. Let's do the easy part first. If I have it in radians, let's do example four first. All I do is put 180 in for pi. That's a first, that see that's the for me that's how I remember that's an easy way to do it. So what's 180 over 12? Yeah, so go ahead and take 180 divided by 12. What do you get, guys? 30 180 divided by 12. Okay. So we get what did you say it was? 15. So that would be what degree then? 15 degrees. Right? How would you figure out this guy in degrees? 7 times 180 divided by 3. Go ahead and do that on your calculator. So what do you get? 420. Okay? Go ahead and do this one on your calculator. 2 times 180 divided by 5. And it'll be negative, right? So it'd be negative what? 72. So those are the easiest to get. If you have a radian measure, you already know it's degree measure. So that's the trick. There is a formula you can use, but I always tell kids, use one use 180 for pi. Just remember that. Use 180 for pi. Okay. Now if you go the other way, this is where you gotta be careful. So if I go from degrees two radians, you actually multiply by pi over 180. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. All right, it's actually pretty easy. So if I just multiply by pi over 180. Now the trickiest part is just making sure you simplify that fraction. Okay, so we're going to do that correctly here. We're going to leave pi in our answer. We're going to simplify these fractions. So what comes out of both of these that would divide out? Definitely 20 is a high number that comes out, right? So go ahead and divide a 20 out of each of these. So let's see what that would become, right? So this part, you, gotta, you just got to be understanding how to break a fraction down. Okay, let's do each one, guys. Take 20 out of 320, what do we have? 16. Alright, so the top is 16 pi. Take 20 out of 180 and what do you have? 9. Can I do any further? 16 and 9 reduce anymore? No, so you're good. So that's your answer in radians. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's take this guy times pi over 180 and we're going to reduce that one. Alright. So what comes out of both of these numbers? Five. Very good. Let's start with a five. What's five out of two twenty-five? Forty-five. Very good. So you got forty-five pi on the top. What's five out of one eighty? Thirty-six. Now you might be able to go a little further. All right. Uh, but in this case, does any other numbers come out of both of these? Nine does. Yeah. So if a 9 comes out of 45, I'm left with what? 5. A 9 comes out of 36, I'm left with what? 4. 
So your answer would be 5 pi over 4 in radian. Okay, so it's actually easier to do, guys. I tell kids just multiply by pi over 180 and then reduce the fraction. Okay. All right, try this one on your own here. Take negative, 100, negative 25 degrees, and I want you to figure out what that is in radians. Okay. If they gave you a degree, would it be wrong to leave it as a decimal um, not necessarily. Like you mean as like a like a five point two nine radian? No. So I just we left it in its exact form, but you could also put it in its decimal form. But usually, I think they they like the exact form a little bit better. Is there going to be like so, a specific way in the Probably exact. What, what you want to stick with? Good point though. Yep. So all right, here we go. Um, Lake, what comes out of both of these there? Five. Very good. So notice you got. Negative 5 pi on the top, and then what's 180 divided by 5? 36. There's your answer. Okay? So at the end of the day, guys, that's where we need to be. Alright? So here's what I want to do. Just to make sure we got this down. Okay? Okay?